after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Uh-huh. Partly. Partly. While, while you were Everybody made, said partly. We're going to talk about why I said partly. Come on. Partly while you were made a gazing stock both by... Oh, oh, let's back up. Let's back up. Let's deal with this. So I'm dealing with first, not just the regular troubles of life, but after I deal with the normal rigors of living life, it seems as though me coming or Christ coming to me has now created a whole new level of devils that seem to be trying to destroy me. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Uh, you ain't really suffered till you had to suffer the suffering of somebody trying to live right. I, I found out that people don't want you to live right. They rather you stay ugly. They rather you stay mean. They, when you try to do right, they said, "No, that can't be real. That ain't you." And they won't even let you be the new person because they always reminding you of who you used to be. Amen. Uh, anybody know some people like that? No matter what you're doing positive, they're gonna always find something negative to pull you back. Amen. But I got good news for a few people. The thing that God has started in you, He's able to perform it. Yes, and it don't matter how many people don't recognize it. It don't matter how many people don't see it. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. Amen. I dare you to say, I know that this is God's hand. So the Bible says, Partly. Partly. While you were made a gazing stock. Oh, now, what is a gazing stock? Anybody know what that means? Speckle. Not only am I suffering, but I'm suffering privately. What do you mean? There's an internal suffering. Let me tell you what that is. I suffer just because I got to go through hell, and I don't understand why I'm going through hell if I'm trying to live right. Amen. Oh, y'all, anybody ever been there? Amen. But if, on top of that, I'm suffering trying to live right, and God has made my suffering a public display. Amen. Oh, I need to talk to people that's had to yes. go through divorce, separation. Somebody that had to lose their home, lose their job. Somebody that had to be humiliated and embarrassed. And you're wondering, God, if I had to go through something, why did you have to let me go through something so public? Oh, can I just talk to real people in here? Anybody, you ever went through something and it won't just you at home crying, but pretty soon the thing got out and people begin to watch and look. And even though they weren't talking, you know they were looking at you. And you're, oh, you're looking around wondering who's talking about you. The Bible said you became a gazing star. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. Now, let me tell you why it ain't no fun when you're dealing with those gazers. Amen? Oh, yeah. Because you got two kinds. Of, everybody said two kinds. Two kinds. You got one gazer that's going to look at you, and they're going to look at you, and they're going to be negative. You, you know, some negative folks. They already negative before you even start. They're just all the way through and through, just nasty and negative. But then you got to deal with church folk who's supposed to be positive, but because they're not going through the trouble you're going through, they're being negative as well. Uh, I found out that you'll go through some trouble in your life that can't nobody understand. Oh, I need to help you out. That way you can stay off of social media, amen. trying to get help and advice from a bunch of people that ain't never been through what you're going through. Yes, Let me help you out today. You will become a gazing stock. Nah. Listen to the book. While you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions. Yes. And partly while you became companions of them that were so used. And now watch this. And had to go through that and watch other people who were suffering right along with you. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. Huh? You, you, well, Pastor, what's the problem? The problem is now I'm saved. Now I'm delivered. I want to know why I serve a God, and I ain't going to get nobody to help me, but I'm going to say it. Why I serve a God that is omnipotent, which means that he can do, come on somebody, he has the power to do anything. Well, God, if you got the power to do anything, why are you not stopping this hell that I'm going through? You ain't been frustrated until you've gotten so frustrated with God because he can stop what you're going through, but yet he will not. Amen. And church yeah. folks don't let us talk about that, minister. And the reason they don't let us say that because now you look like you don't have a lot of faith. But the truth is, sometimes when you go through hell, you want to know, God, if you love me like you say you love me, why did you let this happen to me? Amen. I'm getting ready to go home, but I got to talk to some real people. 
And so while I'm going through and I'm wondering why is God allowing me to suffer and I'm saved, full of the Holy Ghost, why is he letting me go through this situation? And I got an answer. You said, Pastor, uh, the preacher told me, God works in this. No, I got a real, look at somebody telling them we got a real answer. Well, what's the real answer? The real, come on somebody. What is, the real answer is when God has brought us to a position where we are suffering and we're praying and asking God to do things in our life and he doesn't do it, I need y'all to get this, and he doesn't answer our prayer right then and there and he doesn't move mountains out of our way. I got news, and I hope y'all get this today. What is God doing to me? Well, you ought to just look at somebody and tell them God is stretching you. Yeah. No, y'all didn't catch that. Yeah. Well, let me say it again. God is stretching you. Yeah. Now, let me tell you how he stretches you. He stretches you by pulling you from every direction. And while he's pulling you, you're begging for him to stop. You're begging for trouble to stop. You're begging for some relief. You ever been begging for relief? You want to feel better. You want to do better. Yeah. But he's still pulling on you from every direction. And while he's pulling on you, here's the thing that's really stretching you out. It's stretching you because you have to wait. Everybody say you got to wait. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, don't nothing stretch you like having to wait on God to do something that he promised he was going to do. Yes. All right. Do I got anybody being stretched in here today? Amen. Is there anybody in here that's fed up, Amen. tired? I ain't talking about tired. See, some folk get tired, but I'm talking about when you show up, get tired. I'm talking about washing powder tired. When you get Amen. tired like that, now God is beginning to stretch you. And he's stretching you out of your comfort zone. He's stretching you from smiling. He's stretching you from wanting to go out. He's stretching you from wanting to be sociable. And here comes a demon spirit called depression. Oh, because while you're waiting on God, and God ain't moving fast enough, now you're starting to feel like God has forgotten you. Now you think God don't love you. But I got news for everybody. Uh, you ought to just tell somebody, keep on waiting. Keep on waiting. I'm getting ready to go home, but just tell them, keep on, waiting. keep on waiting. Because God is stretching you out. Well, God, why are you stretching me? Because God said, I'm going to take you through some things. And when you go through some things, I got to take you through a process. See, I found out, y'all ain't going to help me, but I'm going to preach anyway. On, I found out only church folks think that they supposed to start school and get their diploma the same day. Oh. Only church folks think that when they're at admission, they ought to walk across the stage and get a degree. Ah. But I found out that this, oh, I dare you look at somebody and say, it's only kindergarten, honey. Only kindergarten. You've got to go through the process. Yes. Church folk want to say, akuda matata, abracadabra, lay your hands on it, sow a seed for it. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible declares you got to go through the process. Oh, I feel like preaching. I'm getting ready to preach in here. I got to go through something. I got to go through some crying spells. I got to go through some headaches and heartaches. I got to go through some anxiety and depression. I got to go through suffering loss. And why are you doing it? Because God's getting ready to stretch me. Well, Lord, you got to tell me more than that. God is saying that when I get finished with you, I'm getting ready to make you so strong. I'm getting ready to make you so strong that when you get finished, you'll be stronger than you ever imagined. Amen. And when you get finished, you'll be a whole brand new person. You ever been stretched so good that when you got through with it, you found out you didn't know that you had that inside of you. But I got news, God got some stuff in you that you don't even know you can handle. God's got power in you. You don't even know you, oh, come on somebody. The stuff you are going through right now, you would have lost your mind if you could have thought it. But I hear God say, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. I got mercy for you in the time of trouble. But we live in a day where church folks want everything right now. We want God to do it right now. We want instant coffee, instant grits, instant rice, express lane. We want it right now. We want it how we want it. And we live a life. Well, when we get down and we pray, we tell God, that's the one I want. Come on, yeah. Give me her. You ever told her, give me him? Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Yeah. But I hear the Lord say, you don't know what you need. You don't know what you want. On, yeah. Let me tell you what I'm about to do in your life. God said, I'm about to stretch you. Well, pastor, what does that really mean? 
when God starts stretching you, he begins to show you that you don't even know what you want. He begins to show you that what you want is killing you. What you want don't bring him to glory. What you want is going to mess your life up. So what does God do? He starts rearranging your life. He starts closing doors. He starts shutting stuff down. And you think that you ain't blessed. But honey, let me tell you, you are blessed. Because God has set you up to set your life in order. Uh, somebody praying for something. Look at somebody and tell them, wait on the Lord. God is setting you up. Well, hold on. Nobody told me that it was going to be like this. But I got news for you today. Let God stretch you. Let God pull you. Let God shape you. Let God mold you. He is the potter. I am the clay. Make me what you want me to be. Make me talk right. Make me act right. Make me dance right. Make me sing right. Help me to please you. Oh, God. Oh, I wish I had some church folk yes, that know what I'm talking about. Yes, now I'm going through a hard time. And the church has messed us up because all the prosperity preachers told us that you can have it if you got enough faith. And that ain't nothing but a bunch of horse mess. You can have it if you got the faith. But I heard the Lord say, you ain't going to get nothing until I'm ready to give it to you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, hold on. But Lord, you know I need money. You know I need a job. God, you know I need a mate. I need some companionship. Can I help y'all out? God knows that you need all that stuff. God knows you need a friend. God knows you need some help. But I got news for you. One scripture said all of that will accompany your salvation. But let me tell you what the problem is. He's going to give you everything you need. Amen. But he's not going to give it to you in the order you ask for it. He's got to rearrange the order. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Now, why does he have to rearrange the order? Because he's got to give me what I asked for in such an order that when he gets finished, it won't destroy what he wants to have with me. Y'all ain't hearing me today. He, oh, y'all didn't hear that. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, no, Pastor, say that a different way. Uh, God wants to answer your prayers, but he's got to prioritize yes. your prayers to give you what you need when you need it. Amen. Oh, hold on for a minute. Because if things are given to you out of order, he'll lose you at the end. Amen. But I got news. Amen. God don't mind blessing you. But when it's all said and done, he ain't interested in a new house. He ain't interested in a spouse. He ain't interested in making you look good for Facebook. He got one thing in mind, and that's you, 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 you. You're the apple of his eye. So he's got to bless you, but he's got to bless you for what you can handle. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. I've been waiting on God a long time. Anybody been waiting on God a long time? Well, I got news for you today. If you've been waiting on God a long time, Sometimes it take a long time because, oh, y'all ain't hearing me, because of what you're asking for. Well, hold on, Pastor. I thought I could ask for anything. You can. But what you're asking for, you ain't ready for. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. If you want God to give you everything right now, then maybe you need to ask for a little bit less because what you have now is what you're ready for now. Y'all didn't catch that. What you have now, you're ready for it now. But there's some things that God's going to do in the future, and he's got to set you up. He's got to make sure that if he bless you this time, and he give you a brand new house, that you ain't going to be a party house, that you ain't going to invite the devil in. He'll give you the desires of your heart. When your desires become his desires, God set my needs in order. Set the blessing in order. Show me what to want. Show me who to love. Show me where to go. Show me how to talk. I need you right now. Because I'm all messed up. Well, y'all ain't hearing me today. Well, what you doing, Lord? I want it all, and I want it when? Right now. But I hear the Lord. Come on, Deacon, read a little bit more. We got to go home. Amen. Oh, come on. 
Partly, partly, while you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches yes, sir. and afflictions. Yes, sir, that's what the church has done. They preach you a message. Every preacher preaches the same man. He's going to bring you out. And we preach and he's going to bring you out to people who never got a chance to go in. Come on now. We preach and come out to people who never had to go in. Wow. So you got people that ain't never been through nothing and they already talking about the Lord them brought me. My God, I need some real preachers that are saying, let me tell you about Jesus. Because my prayers in the past, and you the same thing, I prayed that, Lord, let me avoid this thing. Take this mess away from me. But I heard Jesus say, every place he ever had to go, he had to suffer for it. And if he had to suffer, how much more will you and I? Oh, I wish I had a witness. Everybody that's going to reign with him, You've got to suffer with him. Amen. Come on, Deacon. Amen. Partly while you were made a gazing stock. Yes, sir. Both by reproaches and afflictions. Yes, sir. And partly while you became companions of them huh? that were so used. Yes. For you had compassion of me and my bonds. Come on. And took joyful, joyfully my, uh, the spoiling of your goods. What verse you on? Verse 34. Listen. Knowing in yourself. Knowing in yourself. That you have in, he in heaven a better and enduring substance. Come on. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Oh, that's what I want to leave with you with today. I don't care how long it's taking. Don't throw away your confidence. Amen. Oh, I got a priest right there. Amen. Don't throw away your confidence. Some of you are going through a time where you're losing everything. Everything is being taken away. Everything is being moved around. Everything in your life is being shifted. And you're going through things you never thought you would go through. Can I just talk to some people today? Amen. And the Lord says, cast not away your confidence. What you mean, Lord? Where and what should my confidence be in? Uh, I found out that all of us want to have something we can touch. All of us want to have somebody speaking to us. But in this season, come on somebody, Amen. God's going to put you in a situation where no prophet will be able to speak a word that's going to make it all better. Amen. God's going to put you in a situation where mama and daddy can't give you a loan big enough. Oh, Y'all ain't helping me to hear today. Why is God going to do it like that? Because God's getting ready to show you a side of himself that you've never seen before. He, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing today. He's getting ready to show you that he is a provider. He's getting ready to show you that you can hit rock bottom. But when you hit rock bottom, now you're right in the right place. Pastor, why is rock bottom the place? Because I heard him say, I am the rock. Did you hit the rock? Yeah. Then shout right now. Amen. Because if you hit the rock, that's where Jesus is. All yeah. oh, the young people got a song. And the song says, she is my rock, 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 rock. But I got news for you today. You was rapping about the wrong person. That Negro that you loving on. He ain't no rock. That woman that you think is all that. She ain't no rock. But I got news for you. Let me introduce you to the great I am. And the Bible tells me that rock, that rock, that rock that followed them in the wilderness. It was Christ Jesus. Ah, no other rock I'm building on. All other ground is sinking sand. Anybody in here still waiting on God today? Look at somebody and tell them, wait. Well, let me tell you what you got to have now. Now you got to have confidence. Not in all the other stuff. But you got to have confidence. Just knowing who he is. When you know who he is. That's enough to take you over. That's enough to mess you up. When the devil comes. When the demons come. And they try to destroy you in your way. And the Bible said right around when you're going through hell. Here comes the gazing stalkers who are watching you and pointing at you. And you look like everything has abandoned and everybody has left you. Oh, that ain't no time to get bitter. That ain't no time to start cussing folks out. That ain't no time to get mad with folks. Y'all ain't hearing me today. That ain't no time to start telling folk all. Oh, now that's the time when God said, draw close to me. Draw nigh unto me. And if you draw nigh unto me, he said, I'll pull you. I'll draw nigh unto 
to you. I dare you today to draw. I know you're going through, but draw. I know you're sick, but draw. I know you're afflicted, but draw. I dare you to draw. And like the old people say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal. Ah, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I ain't got time to worry about haters. Worry about who don't like me. Worry about who talking. Worry about who gazing. I ain't got to look over my shoulder. I ain't got to tell somebody, watch my back. You know why I ain't got to get nobody to watch my back? Because he already told me, goodness and mercy shall follow me. I ain't got to see who watching me because goodness and mercy is already behind me. And he's like my buddy. It used to be a dog, baby, called my buddy. My buddy, wherever I go, wherever I am, but what you think they got that from? I got a friend that stick them closer than a brother. Late in the midnight hour, I can call him when nobody answering the phone. Jesus on the main line already know what I need. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's still gonna do it. He's still faithful. Stand up to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I ain't gotta duck nobody. I ain't worried about backstabbers. Because goodness and mercy follow me everywhere I go. Follow me to the crack house. And follow me to the sex house. And follow me to the job application. Oh, it follow me to my interview. It follow me to the hospital. It follow me to divorce court. It follow me everywhere I go. Did it follow you? Elder boy, did it follow you? Did it follow you, Lamar? When you lost your grandfather, goodness and mercy shall walk behind you. Brother Twan, goodness and mercy gonna walk behind you. Brother CD, play that good time, boy. Because everywhere you go, goodness and mercy shall follow me through. Brother from Northside, why you spinning the records? Hey DJ, goodness and mercy shall follow you. And I got news for you too. It wasn't the sleep gods. It wasn't the other gods. It's the true and the living God. And he don't slumber. And he don't sleep. My God, my God. Oh, I dare you to stand up. If you messed up, and you know you messed up, and still said he's my God. I know y'all say, but he's my God too. He's my God too. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with clarity. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Ah, come on and give God some praise. Hey! Come on, preacher. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Listen, I know we had other questions we didn't get to. We'll answer them next week. We can keep the questions. We'll get to the questions next week. Don't miss it. But I feel that there are people that are still waiting on God. And they're still going through. And your pastor wants you to know that. You see, let me just say this. The church kept telling us when you get Jesus, everything gonna be all right. The only problem is they never told me when. They didn't tell me that it don't happen right away. But he's so busy building who he wants me to be. And that he's going to give me blessings that's going to blow my mind. But he's got to change my mind. And the only way he can change my mind is for me to go through. Anybody been through something today? Yeah. 
you ain't dead. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. I said, you've been through, but you ain't dead. Huh? You ain't finished. It's not over. Let patience have her perfect work in you. She's working. Let her work. Let patience have her perfect work in you. What you mean, Pastor? There's a burn when you don't know when daylight is coming again. Who was it that was walking across the water? And when he was walking across the water, he began to walk on water to Jesus. The Bible told Peter, he said, the, the scripture said, Peter was looking at Jesus in the middle of the storm. And while he was focused on Jesus, he could stay walking on his situation. The moment he took his eye off Jesus and put it on the situation, and he looked down and said, man, I'm looking at, he began to sink. You're going to have to take your eyes off of what you're going through. And put your eyes on the man that's able to steal the war. I, I said this before and I'll say it again. I heard this a long time ago in a movie and I'm telling you, I kept it. The greatest W-E-G, hold on, W-E-I-G, H-T. What that spell? 